CataractCoach.com. Wait, what just happened? During Faco, the nucleus just disappeared. Why? And now what do you do? Watch carefully. The rexus is radialized in that sub-incisional area. Hydro dissection is being performed, but remember, that's a high-risk maneuver. You're pressurizing the capsular bag, and you can cause that radialized area to run out towards the equator of the lens and even to the posterior capsule. So we have other videos on cataract coach that show you how to avoid that problem and how to get the nucleus out. But let's get the phaco probe in the eye. Let's see what's going to happen here. And a sculpt down the middle looks like. All right, sculpting a groove. Now think about it. The radialized area is right under the phaco probe in the subincisional area. And now you're grooving and you're going to use the two instruments to crack or separate those two nuclear halves. What's the direction of the force that you're placing on the capsule? This maneuver right there, that's causing that radialized area to run zip through the posterior capsule. And just about now, your posterior capsule is wide open. So what does that mean? Look carefully. One, two, three, gone. Oh my goodness. And even worse, you pulled the phaco probe out of the eye. By doing that, you let the anterior chamber pressure go to zero, so a lot more vitreous prolapse forwards. So yeah, let's put some viscoelastic in. You can see there's a lot of cortex remaining. That has to be cleaned up. Time to accept reality. The nucleus is already in the vitreous cavity. You are not getting it up right now. This patient will need to go to your vitreoretinal colleague for a pars plane of vitrectomy, pars plane of lensectomy. That's okay. Let's clean up the vitreous that's prolapsed. Now using this bimanual set, I think you're better off using the side port incisions or making an extra side port incision. Avoid that main phaco incision because it's too big and it leaks and you're losing the benefits right now of having a bimanual approach. Here you also have to know the difference between IA cut, which you'd use to remove the cortex, and anterior vitrectomy. So clean up the prolapse vitreous. You want to use preservative-free triamcinolone here also. It'll help you stain that vitreous to see how much is left. And be careful. Don't put traction on the vitreous because that can cause a retinal breaker detachment. And you need to preserve as much capsule as possible so we can get the lens in the eye. Now, to remove cortex to avoid damaging the capsule, if you've already removed the prolapse vitreous, you can just tap the cortex button on your machine. Then it'll be position one irrigation, position two aspiration. It won't go to the cutter. But that's a good job here removing that cortex. You definitely want to clean the cortex up. Don't leave all that cortex behind. So here at the end, looks pretty good. Cortex has been removed and there is sufficient support. Now, should you put a lens in now? Do the triamcil and wash. In fact, you know what? Let's leave the eye aphagic. Let the retina person finish the vitrectomy. You'll go back for a secondary IOL. This patient will be okay.